two minutes. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Indeed, do so. Hi, Lynn Cullen here. On Tuesday, May 22nd. Looks like another beautiful summer day here. And uh, it being a Tuesday, that means my sister Susan is here. Hi, Suze. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm okay. feel a little worse for wear. I was, uh, I don't know. What was I doing last night? When you don't quite remember what you were doing last night, that's always a bad sign, isn't it? <laughs> that's not true. I really wasn't doing anything. Anyway, uh, well, I was watching, as you know, forgive us, Dancing with the Stars. He did good. I thought he was the best last night. I don't know. I think she is. But I thought his freestyle was definitely. Oh, the best. that was fun as can be. And I'm and gonna. I think Levy's was the worst. Yeah. And I thought that the choreography on the woman's was very good. But I thought she she was sloppy. Huh? Huh? Well, you did, did you? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I voted for the first time. I tried. Well, to do... I just want you to know that I talked mother through texting her votes. Texting her vote six times. Good for her. It took a little while, but she got it done. <laughs> you know, it's funny because when you start, you know, you you literally have to, you know, we start with pick up your phone, look for the green icon with the converse, the cartoon conversation bubble on it. Right. You know, I mean, that's it. Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, but you got her through it. I did. And... And I figured it out all by myself. Good for you. <laughs> I didn't know how often you could vote, so I voted like 100, I don't know, I bet probably 15 times. Well, it times. tells you on your confirmation text that you have five more, four more, three more, Oh, two I more. didn't see any of that. Sorry. No. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, for those uh, wondering, uh, there was a piece in the Green Bay newspaper this weekend uh, that focused on the fact that Driver, of course, was uh, in the finals, and obviously in Green Bay, that this is a big story, as was as it was three years ago when Heinz Ward um, was in the finals, and in fact won. And Driver specifically said in that article that he wants Packer Nation to do what Steeler Nation did and uh, put him over the top, and he even wants. Steeler Nation, I mean, 
Packer Nation, you could get any of this straight, Packer Nation, to vote in even greater numbers than Steeler Nation. They're probably t- the, I don't know, they might well, be. Well, they've been doing it. I mean, it, because, yeah. frankly, he, he should have, I thought that the woman that he edged out last week was really better than he was. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we'll see. Anyway, uh, I mean, if this continues, there'll just be one NFL player after another winning this well, thing. Well, of course. Well, they, I don't think the people but on the show want that. But they can't all dance. See, it doesn't work if they can't dance. But this will, if he wins, it'll be the third NFL player to win. There was that Dallas Cowboy who was the first one. Right, but, they, but he could dance. He couldn't dance as well as either Hines or Driver. But yeah, it, he was pretty good. Yeah, well. <laughs> oh, and so if you're watching American Idol 2, tonight is, uh, the, the, aren't they both like the finals and they're up against each other? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's somebody supposed to do? That's what DVRs are for. Oh, I don't have one. No. And even if I did, I wouldn't know how to use it. <laughs> In well, all. that one's interesting too. Seeing that the uh, the the guy who I like, this Philip Phillips, he's uh, yeah. he's sick. He's, he's sick. He's got this bad kidney problem, and his doctor wants him in the hospital like two weeks ago, and he's not going. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so he'll be able to go in a day or two. <laughs> right. That's what he keeps saying. What kind of a thing does he have? He's such a young guy. Know. Oh boy. Okay. Um, I, well, uh, Susan. Yes. Uh, your your diocese and my diocese uh, are are two of the. Uh, are these plaintiffs? No. Yeah, yeah. My diocese is just like. Okay, but so is the Catholic. The, the diocese here also filed in federal court here, and and so in in federal court in St. Louis yesterday they filed, here they filed. In Notre Dame file, what's the purpose of filing all over the place like that? So there, there, is that more than one case? I don't understand it. What happens? if? Do you know? No. I would think if they're filing it in federal court, one case would do. Right. So what are they shopping I mean, around they might, for? A, I don't know. They're I shopping mean, around for all, the... I don't know. They certainly don't need to file in multiple locations if it's all, it's all going to be joined as one suit. Well, there's a I lot of know. stuff it's I don't a understand. Political show. Well, I don't know. I don't think they they aren't acting like it is. They really think it's an affront to. Um, no, no, no. I mean the multiple filings. I can't. Oh, the multiple filings are, but there. I, I, I what I'm wondering is, is there some? It, I know, it ups the the media attention, but there. I mean, does this mean that in every those aren't the same courts. That's a different federal court here and a different federal court here, and different judges would be. So they're going to argue the case, the same case in like I don't, 12 I, my, different. I don't know. Does anybody I don't know? know. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to pretend to know the correct answer, but it would seem to me to be a waste of. Uh, I mean, there's only one federal government, so each court is, uh, you know, a. a a representative of the same government, if it's all the same case, I would think these judges would take judicial notice of it and join them somehow. All right. Um. But I don't know. I'm, I'm, my, my federal procedure is, is, uh, is at best well, 40 this years is histo- old. This is historic. This is the first time Susan has failed to bullshit her way through a question. Well, okay. But so there's, they, they filed lawsuits in 12 different federal courts. Now, if anyone has an idea why that would be, let us know. Um, and also, they're getting uh, you know, free representation. So there's some, a law firm, the same law firm is handling all the all cases. Of them. Expect so it's expecting that they're all gonna you know I had, but which court will see, but I mean I, I you know all of this stuff is beside the point I have a hard time understanding how the church weighs what's a deal breaker 
um, because to me, the principles of the church on the whole should be standing four square behind any kind of help that we can get to the people to get insurance and get to medical care. And if they're, and all this is saying is that if somebody, you know, that is, if they've done right by their, by their parishioners and their parishioners agree with the church, they aren't going to use birth control. This is for other people that work for Catholic institutions. But, that have a right to this kind of health coverage. You know, so right, but I don't ch- understand why in thinking about what the principles of the church, why this this relatively minor, it would seem to me, issue of contraception trumps huh. all of the good. Yeah, but Susan, that the health clo- health care bill could do no. They make they make it's these not a minor all the time. I know, but they it's... way and they way, and so I mean, to me, this is simply this. This becomes so political that I, I'm I'm really I am getting a little aggravated. I think they're engaging in politics. They're engaging, and and I'm and it's it's almost time to tax. Well, <clears throat> also. <clears throat> Um, the Supreme Court's going to be ruling on the constitutionality of the law in general, right? In, right, in a month. and so this all might be moot. <coughs> and that'll be coming out soon. So if I were any of these judges, I would say we're waiting. Well, um, I, I just, I don't even understand. I mean, I've read... What the bishop here said, I read what uh, you know the bishop in New York said. Um, the read what, and I'm sorry, they're, I'm tone deaf or something. I can't quite understand what they're. I don't think they're right. Well, I I was listening to I somebody do not say think this is a fringe, an infringement of this is not about separation of church and state. It's about them not being able to impose their religious view. On, on people not of their religion whom they choose to employ. Well, yeah, but federal law forces them to employ these people. <laughs> no, it doesn't force them no, to employ them. No, but you can't, them. You it can't discriminate. them to cover them. Yes, but you can't discriminate on somebody based on their religion. In other words, they have to... Oh, but, I mean, they could just say you aren't... A private employer can employ or not employ for whatever damn reason they want. No. Yes, if they find you disqualified because they are a religious institution. Hello? They can do that. Well, Susan, but a private employer uh, might say, I'm not going to hire a black person. They can't do that. I'm saying No, but they can say you are qualified, and they can make up any reason. Oh, yeah, but it, it might not stand. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying it's very loosey-goosey. In the real world, it's very loosey-goosey. Well, there have been a lot of Catholic uh, pundits, uh, granted, uh, more liberal ones, uh, writing uh, woeful pieces about what's happening to the church. Why are they getting so f- crazed about this one aspect? Either it, It's a whole thing. I mean, it's... You know, when, when they sent Burke and Law to Rome because they were too conservative for the United States, they got kicked upstairs to Rome. To be cardinals. To be cardinals. Right. Those are the two that wrote that thing about the nuns. What, that we have to go after the nuns because they're yeah, they feeding the poor? Yeah, they were the one that said that the, the nuns, that the, that the women religious, <laughs> were out of line. <laughs> All of them. They're they're tending the to United the needy States, and that was yeah. Burke and Law that wrote that. Burke being from St. Louis. Bur- Burke being from St. Louis. Law being uh, from uh, Boston. And you know, uh, and previous to that, from I think Wisconsin. I know from Wisconsin. I just can't remember. Yeah, but what. Law, Law, but Law was the and cardinal. Law was Boston. He was the guy that that they spirited out in the middle of the night. Right, because he, he he excused all the pedophile priests. But he's going after the nuns. Now he's going after the nuns For because they are uh, the, they aren't uh, they're <laughs> too just, liberal. Nah. 
<laughs> well, so I mean, I, you know, I honestly, I just see this more as um, a very conservative right wing war on women, and it has, and the the churches is one of the prongs of the offensive, and you know, I mean, I, I. I, I I think it's very political, and it's all related. Well, I do, too. Um, And speaking of wars on women, did you see any coverage of this huge, um, I can't remember which stadium in New York it was held at, but there was this uh, thing held at uh, a stadium, like, that the Giants play in or something, and it was all these ultra orthodox Jewish men. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, and women were not invited. You couldn't come. No women allowed. The entire stadium is filled with these, you know, guys in their black suits and their and their white beards and curls and hats. I mean, what a sight that is to start with. Is so that why Met are stadium. they all there? They, do you know why they were all there? Yes, but you tell them. They were holding a very serious meeting <clears throat> about what to do about the Internet. Right. How to, how, how to use it. <laughs> how to use it. But they, they see it as an instrument mostly of the devil. Right. And they really don't want their women on there. They don't want... They're, you know, they've outlawed, you you can't go, they don't have television in their homes. They don't listen to any of the popular culture at all. I mean, it's, and now with the internet, why? So the rabbis have realized that they can't, this thing is out of control. I mean, they do have phones, they have some, they have smartphones, some of them. And so what are you going to do? So they're trying to, like, sh- explain what you can use it for, what you can't, and you're know, trying to con- control it in some way. Lots of luck is what I say. Mm-hmm. But the idea that, you know, it just makes me puke. I'm sorry. Well, and that I women, w- women that couldn't come. Huge sham. <sighs> I mean, a huge sham. What's a I sham? Think if you don't. What's a if sham? You don't think that 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 there's a whole lot more contact and knowledge of of everyday life, and I really. Well, I think one of the rabbis at some point I read in this article, a rabbi was giving a speech, and his uh, BlackBerry went off. Yeah. Yeah, and he said, "Oh, excuse me." And, you know, he he says, my BlackBerry, and I guess it might have gotten a laugh. But, you know, the thing is, is they would like access to all this stuff. They don't want the sheep to have access. And they definitely don't want the women or the children. That all-male, you know, hierarchy is is as guilty of, you know, all the awful things that the churches. That's why I brought it up. I don't want people to think we're beating up on the on the Catholics. No, these it's the same thing. These they're, I am so sick on, of them. On young children, male and yeah, female tell me about as it. well. I know I am so sick of these ultra fundamentalist, Herbal. powerful groups of men who dictate what women can do, where they can be, where they can go, what they can see, where they must sit. What I, I'm so fed up with it, I can't see straight. Well, I don't know how any self-respecting person allows it. It starts it. with the theory that men are so weak that they can't control themselves. Oh, I got to tell that story. Wait, wait, I got to tell that story. How I was once at a, a home of, of people who are religious in this manner. I'd been invited to their um, Sabbath dinner. And, you know, for me, you know, just because I'm a Jew, you think it wasn't like going into a totally alien culture? It was. 
And there were all kinds of things. I didn't know what to do. We had to go. You couldn't talk. You had to go into the kitchen. You had to wash your hands in this very ritualistic way. Pour this, pour here, pour there. Say a prayer. Shut up. Don't say a word. Walk in. Sit down. Get up. And I'm, I'm like trying not to make a faux pas. All the women were seated on one side of the table. All the men and boys on the other. And they started to sing, the father started to sing this wonderful Hebrew song, which I know. It's welcoming the Sabbath bride. Start singing. So I start singing, along with, it turns out, the men. It took me maybe about, I don't know, six, seven, eight measures before I realized that I was the only female singing. So I stopped. The men went on. When they finished, I, I, was, I, I, had, I felt embarrassed. I mean, I was humiliated. I felt like I'd been humiliated. I clearly had done something wrong. I couldn't imagine why. Why, why I wasn't able to sing and welcome the Sabbath bride like they were able to, and I love that song. So when we finished, I spoke up, very unwomanly of me, I'm sure, and I said, why weren't, why weren't any of the women singing? And this little kid sitting across, not little, he was like 18 years old with a wispy little beard, um, and the whole thing, the hat and the dee looked up at me and he said, very earnestly, he said, because the sound of a woman's voice singing can distract the men. Right, poor little weak little thing. So I can't sing? <clears throat> I, th- I believe I said, Not the sound of my voice. (laughs) So women can't sing because the men, what, might get a boner? I don't know. What the? And women can't wear clothes of a certain kind because the men might and women have to hide their hair and you know and here we go to the muslims and have to wear you know black tablecloths you know in 110 degree temperatures because the men can't control themselves i don't understand why the women of the world do not rise up and take charge I can't believe the women all over the world who tolerate this crap. From the Catholic women who tolerate it, to the Jewish women who tolerate it, to the Muslim women who tolerate it. It's beyond me. It feels un-American to me. Susan, isn't America all about free will and the right to govern yourself? And equality? And personal responsibility? (laughs) It's not my job. To make that man behave according to the law. Why? Yes, indeed. It is that man's responsibility to make his behavior be in accordance with the laws of this land. That means you can't assault women, you can't assault children, be they boys or girls. You can't do that. And you can't hide behind your religion so that you have access and you're allowed to do it. It's it's really it, it really. Ugh. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that weird? We started talking about these bishops suing, and then I thought of all those Hasids in in what Met Met Stadium, and then I and then you think no, of the all, Muslims, it's, and you think it's all, all the same how damn we can sit thing. There and let Jesus these men, Christ. excuse the expression, pontificate about what we may or may not do how we can treat or not treat our bodies, how we make our health decisions or not. I mean, really. It's 2000... (laughs) Friggin' 12! Ladies! I just beyond me. The only reason they have the power is because we have seeded it. Stop it. Well, we stopped long ago, but look at all of them who don't. 
What what are they thinking? Well, somehow we've let them convince people that the word feminist is a bad thing. How a woman can't be for women, I don't get. But somehow <laughs> a feminist is a bad thing. Oh, women, women. Stop. Women, as you know, according to all these religious men, was the start of, of the, the reason we're not in the Garden of Eden right now. It was always a woman, you understand, Susan, which is why they've got to be controlled. So, this makes me very angry, can you tell? No, really, it makes me equally angry. Yeah. I mean, it really does. And I, I guess, more than anger, I'm, I'm just bewildered at the women who enable this. I'm bewildered by it. I really am. I am too, and we've got a whole group of young women that have no experience of, I mean, any of the stuff that we did just 30 years ago. So, they, I, I don't get it, but I mean, they're part of the group that reacts negatively to the term feminist, you know, and I, it's like... Oh, if I hear one more younger woman, I mean, all my life, as I say, a woman who has done something, you know, wonderful, will always say, now, I'm not a feminist, or... I'm not Don't a feminist. Get me wrong. I'm yeah, not, I'm not a, a feminist. feminist. But and then they will simply say, "What is a feminist statement?" And I'm thinking, "What the hell do you think a feminist is?" It's you. But the but the the right had so as they do demonize that word, like they demonize the word liberal. That and and and, and that women ran away from it. You I know? know. I never got it. Because and liberals ran away the from of this stuff was the very definition of a feminist. Exactly. Phyllis Schlafly's telling women to stay in the kitchen while she's out enjoying this role of a power broker. She was in law school with me. She was 20 years older than I was, but she was in law school. With yeah, me. she wasn't in the kitchen. What the hell was she doing in law school? She was trying to help uphold laws to keep her sisters down. Jesus! Help us. All right. That's why I won't use the word progress. All, all the liberals who started calling themselves progressives. Screw that. It's because they didn't want to use the L word because the L word had been demonized by the right wing right. You know, noise they machine. Right, it. So, but, own it. And don't let other people change your vocabulary. <sighs> You know, I still, you know, I'm, I'm going to tune into the Democratic Convention. I don't care about anybody else. What? That seems well, like a non sequitur. Democratic isn't allowed anymore. It's Democrat. Oh. oh, well, that's something else they've done. Right. And we haven't fought back enough. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Did you see the report that says that the uh, the language skills of the... Congress have now descended to somewhere around the eighth grade level of English usage? No. Yeah. Well, that puts them still ahead of the, according to the research I was told about, puts them ahead of the public because I once, when computers first sort of like came in and software came in, and I was still in TV, I wrote a story and the producer, I guess, looked at it and put it, ran it through this uh, software that said it was not at the proper reading level. It was too high. I might have had a five-syllable word in there somewhere. Right. It was too high. And I said, what the hell are you talking about? And they said, well, we're trying to, apparently, we're supposed to gear our scripts to, I can't remember what it was, fifth grade or something. That that basic, that simple, don't... Ch and because I, it doesn't occur to them that using, that, that, that using good language with, with interesting words might inspire people to learn new words. Well, when you hear language, you pick it up. I mean, and you it, use it. it. And you use it. You hear a word used correctly in a sentence, you've learned the word. That's the word. 
Well, oh, the bird, bird, birds, birds, a word. Okay, Suze. Okay, so we're just working ourselves up into a real grump. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I needed to wake up. This woke me up. But let's, we'll stop. We will cease and desist and take a break. And then uh, we'll return and we'll even change the subject <laughs> a little bit. Okay? Okay. Okay. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. Go to BergBargains.com for great deals on tickets to the Opera, City Theater, Symphony, History Museum, and Carnegie Museums. BergBargains.com, Pittsburgh's only online deal site where the deals don't expire. Check out this week's big deal. Over 40% off authentic laser lipo treatments from FDA-approved Zerona. BergBargains.com. Bravo and Vela wants to thank all of southwestern Pennsylvania, the USA, and the world for helping to liberate his native country of Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea has suffered 43 years of dictatorship, 43 years of human rights abuses, 43 years of corruption, and 43 years of kleptocracy. Even with $5 billion in oil revenue in 2011, the 700,000 citizens of Equatorial Guinea earn less than $2 per day. A proud Mount Lebanon resident, please help Gustavo and Vela usher in the 21st century by allowing freedom, democracy, and socioeconomic prosperity by the rule of law for the next 43 years and beyond. Email him at presidentandvela at yahoo.com to help free Equatorial Guinea. Get Lynn Collin live on your smartphone. Go to citypapermobile.com now for Pittsburgh City Paper's brand new mobile app. Get the latest restaurant reviews, event listings, movie times, and of course, Lynn Collin live on your smartphone. Citypapermobile.com. Now, it's back to Lynn Collin live at pghcitypaper.com. Hello there, hello there, and welcome. We got a caller? Hello? Hello? Hello. What do you mean you have to do it? I have to. Oh, see, now Jess has to figure out. I'll control away from you, remember? What? Hello? Hello? Hello, Lynn? Yes. Yeah. Um, You were talking about reading levels. Yeah. And this is just a kind of an aside. I collect old-time radio shows. Huh. We listen to them all the time. And... The language level in these old radio shows from like the 20s, the 30s, and 40s have to be three grade levels above what currently is out there today. Easily, I bet. It, it, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I'm talking, you know, like the comedians, even the even the detective shows and the dramas and stuff. I, I, you know, I noticed that my wife's a writer, too, and um, she's constantly writing to a fifth grade level because she said that's about where everybody's at. But uh, yeah, it, it just it just uh, it dawned on me one day that how um, how much more vocabulary, bigger vocabulary was being used in these old radio shows. Well, you know, I, I, if you even go back further, so that look at how uh, politicians spoke in the 19th century to the people. Oh yes. I mean, we don't even understand what the hell they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the people got it. Oh, yeah. The people got it. And I think it's, it's true. If we used it, people would get it. But everything is like like the lowest common denominator. That's we right. We should be bringing, bringing, bringing people up instead of teaching down to them. Well, see, TV, you know, where I labored for a while, was all about lowest common denominator because they wanted the largest audience they could get. And the way you do that is uh, head for the bottom. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy uh, because uh, brighter people leave those forums. They can't stand it anymore. It's too the whole thing, the subject matter, the, everything. And you get a you concentrate a less educated audience. That's what television has now. Television news certainly. It's a much less educated audience. Oh yeah. Well, not only much less educated, but I think the people running television nowadays have such disdain. Oh, tell me. The they, American public. They do. Of they, course. I mean, it, it's like they there's do. a few shows that we watch. The rest of the time, we're watching stuff from Netflix. We're watching. You know, I mean, we've gotten shows from the 50s to watch because it's it, it just much more sophisticated. But I really think that uh, <laughs> these network executives think that, well, nobody out there is as bright as I am. And, of course, they're all really stupid, so we'll put this stuff on. And that guy over there is doing the same thing, doing something that we should copy. But, 
No, it's, you... it's true. I think in, in reading to your kids is so important. Right. Getting your kids reading when they're three. But, okay, thank you. I hey, just... totally agree. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Well, I mean, you know, you and I have to say that we, our dad used, would never use a one-syllable word where a five-syllable word would do. Would suffice, Susan. Would suffice, correct. <laughs> and we used and to make fun of that all the time. But we made fun of it, but we also learned got bigger each and every one of those words. Right, right. Um. I once had somebody uh, call the show and say, you're always using these big words and you're just trying to make us feel stupid. And I, you know, I was stunned. I said, she thought it was me being, I guess, an elitist. And I said, no, those are just words I know. And I'm, I'm look for the right word to say what I want to say. And um, when I hear words I don't know, I try to figure out their meaning in context. And sometimes you, you even look them up. Sometimes I do, but I'm pretty lazy. But yeah, right. I don't consider it somebody, you know. Okay, let's move on. Um, so Zuckerberg got married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, carefully timed, apparently. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. So he is. Uh, so Facebook goes public, and he makes a gazillion dollars on Friday. Not as much as he thought he would. And uh, um, a gazillion dollars on Friday. And then Saturday, he gets married. And the way that works in California is that anything Zuckerberg earned before marriage is solely his. Right. It's not subject to community property law in California. (laughs) So so, Everything he makes from Saturday on... He'd have to share with the wife. But... (laughs) But all of his stock and all of his and the billion that he cashed in on on uh, Monday, that's his and can't but, be touched. Right. But the but this uh, this piece in the business section of the Times says uh, so under normal circumstances, all of his stock would remain his separate property. But the fact that he and that his job is to continue to contribute to the growth of that stock, uh, that anything that that stock earns from Saturday on might be considered communal property. Oh, I think so. Okay, so they're, they're, saying, they're, they're saying that. And, 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 and no one knows whether or not they've got a prenup, um, although... Listen to this. This is interesting because these were college uh, sweethearts. And then when he went out to California, he asked her to join him out there. And she said, well, Mark, I will come out to California if you will sign an agreement, a relationship agreement. Uh, This is several years ago she did this. And here's what that agreement stated. It outlined issues like how much time they would spend together. (laughs) She said, I'm changing my life to come out here with you. Here's what I want. So she made him sign an agreement. And they're saying she might be the one who asked for a prenup, not him. Oh, I'm sure. Well, you don't know. know. what? She's a... I... I, My... As much as my instinct is to dislike him, my instinct is to actually really like her. Um, everything Why? I've Have read about said, her, oh, she, really? taught, she taught math for a while, I think, and her kids just loved her. And and uh, and then you know, here she is with this clearly billionaire. Even you know, a few years ago, and she she went to medical school. Yeah, and she's going to be a, a, a pediatric a pediatrician. Uh, she's going to live her own life. Yeah. Well, sure. I, you know, so I'm. If she asks for one more power to her, I think that that's absolutely reasonable. And I'll and I'll tell you a little related story. When Eric and I were dating, and he had a a year to do an internship in St. Louis, and then was doing a residency in New York. I had 
a job in Minneapolis. Hmm. And he said, don't take the job. Stay here with me in St. Louis for a year. And let's see what happens. And I just looked at him and I said, no. You know, that I, I cannot give up a job and stay someplace on the chance that something happens. That what is, did he mean that by something happened? You have to make me a far better offer than that. And that's when he so asked I, to marry you know, him? I don't think it's unreasonable that they have that conversation. Well, wait a minute. She wrote that and signed hey. that. I think that that's what any smart-thinking wait. woman would do in that situation. Well, so what, what, were you, what kind of an offer were you fishing for and what did he give you? Well... This, the, what follows is is uh, what I have always teased him about as being the weeniest proposal known to man. Okay. He then said, well, if I asked you to marry me, what would you say? Oh, so he put it in the condition? Yes, what? he put it in a hypothetical. <laughs> he, was a, he was afraid of rejection. And, and I just looked at him and I laughed and I said, is, 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 that, is a that a proposal? I said, well, if you asked me to marry you, I would say yes. And so that was the proposal? That was the proposal. Oh, my God. Well, I was proposed to walking down a sidewalk in New York City where it just sort of was offhanded where Cullen said, hey, uh, so maybe we should get married, huh? And I said, yeah, I guess so. I think that was ours. Yeah, well, I mean, I really think that's how it used to be done. There weren't all these fantasy. What was, uh, what's with the down on one knee thing? People didn't really, did they really do that? They they, no. they do it now. Uh, not in my experience. Not either. But now they seem like they, they do that. Do. Now they stage these, these I can't wonderful stand it. romantic. Ick, fooey. So... If some guy ever got down on his knee in front of me, I would say, will you stand up? You know, Please. get off the floor now. Hey, that's why no one will, because women like me scare them. Well, right, and I'm sure that I must have scared my husband, too. But it turned, it, it, regardless, it worked. It did! But, I mean, you know, I wasn't going to give up a job, a place, a job that I had to stay in a place where I didn't have a job on the off chance that maybe something would happen sometime. That would be stupid. Yes, indeed. Chuck writes, Hey, my wife and I are Catholic. My wife uses birth control pills, so I guess she's going to hell. But not me. He's <laughs> <laughs> right! <laughs> okay. He says, but, okay, my question, if my wife decides to have tubal ligation in order to prevent births going forward, will the Catholic Church also sue to have that procedure removed from my coverage? The Presbyterians are sure looking good to me right now. Yeah, I don't think that the Church doesn't condone that. No. Hey, and you see this recent, this unanimous Supreme Court uh, decision yesterday uh, involving twins that were born from yes. uh, frozen sperm of their, that their father had been dead for 18, a year and a half. But knowing, I guess he knew he was going to die. They froze his sperm because so, his, his widow wanted to have his children. She has his children with his sperm, but the court ruled what? That those kids are not they entitled? They are not entitled to survivor benefits from the father's Social Security. And what they ruled was is this is controlled by the way state law defines these issues. And in that particular state, an offspring is not an offspring of somebody if that life was not conceived during the dead parent's lifetime. Life, actual life. Yeah, right. And, but in another state where the state law reads differently, it, it could have a different outcome. Well, but uh, Ginsburg, I think, wrote the ruling, and I saw something she wrote saying something like, you know, when they when they created the Social Security Act, I mean, this kind of thing was not even uh, reality, so it, it's not addressed, and... Um, and then I'm thinking, yeah, but isn't that what the court's for, to move things into the Well, right. I mean, present? think of all the things that aren't addressed in the Constitution. Or were, we... or like, you know, blacks are three-fifths of a, of a person. I mean, hello? Well, then shouldn't they say, 
Or is that an, I'm confused by I'm just I don't understand the court anymore. I don't understand anything anymore. Well, no, I mean she was what she was saying is that that the the way that we've been dealing with these issues under the federal social security act is by is, is by letting the states define some of, you know, the way they define some of the terms. And so then that's what she was continuing because the states are staying more up on this kind of law than than the federal government is. Well, states define marriage and all that kind of crap too. Right. Define marriage. Okay. I don't, you know, and honestly, I don't I have a hard time just practically speaking of saying that the child of someone that's been dead for over, you know, a year and a half is entitled to Social Security benefits. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that argument can be made. This is true. Oh, dear. Here's a little factoid that will not blow any American's mind, but it should. In the entire nation of Germany and all of their police forces in all the cities, towns, and bailiwicks. In the year 2011, in Germany, all police forces fired only 85 bullets in all of 2011. In the entire nation. I can't even get that through my head. In New York City... (laughs) Police fired 84 shots at a single murder suspect (laughs) in April of this year. (laughs) What does that tell you? Well, you know what? You know what I find so amazing about this is that this isn't even a conversation anymore. We have so lost this gun battle thing. Totally. That, you know, I I mean, at, at a certain point, People that don't want guns are now arming themselves because you do have to be stupid to be the only one without one. Yeah, right. That's why. Yeah, I'm. I'm telling you, all you it's liberals. It's a critical mass. You get to a certain point. That's right. And you got to have one. Liberals and feminists, arm thyselves. Seriously. Okay. Well, I got to take another break. Okay. Okay. Be back. Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for Rob Zombie, Brian Regan, the Abbott Brothers, and Will Eisner. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone at citypapermobile.com. This is the sound of a flat-screen television hurled off a building. Now the new bike your kid wants. These are the things you could have all cast into oblivion. Because when you throw away money on wasted electricity, you throw away everything you could have bought with it. Use Energy Star light bulbs and appliances and you could save hundreds of dollars a year. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Now, it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Okay, we are back. And this from the New York Times Science section today. Never brush your teeth immediately after a meal. Who knew? I, I missed that one. How come? Uh, because... Uh, brushing too soon after meals or after drinks, especially if you've been eating anything or drinking anything that is acidic, can actually do more harm than good. I guess you spread it around uh, and it has a, more of a chance of harming the dentin. So in other words, they say, if you want to be like sc- totally crazed about brushing your teeth after eating, it, wait at least a half hour, minimally a half hour. Do you know anybody who brushes after every meal? Sorry, I don't. Me either. I think it's excessive myself. And so now they'll have to wait. It's sort of like, remember how when we were kids, it was a given that you couldn't 
jump in the swimming pool right after right, half an hour. They were wrong about that. Totally too. wrong. So I this sounds like that, but um, I don't know. So that, it makes some sense. Um, at least 30 minutes should elapse before toothbrushing. Um, after eating any kind of acidic stuff, and there's usually acid. Like they said, actually, a Diet Coke is an ins- is one thing like that. Also, if you have heartburn or something, an acid reflux attack, don't brush your teeth after that either. I'm just saying, just trying to keep you all healthy. Well, there's a f- interesting story. I don't know if it... People will agree, but <laughs> in um, oh, you know what we're not talking about? Psst, psst, psst. What? The uh, the the sentence in the um, the gay uh, suicide Rutgers, the Rutgers case. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I'm not. I I, he, I don't have problems with it. I gotta say, I don't totally either, and I I wonder if. Why that is, but mostly because here's what I think. What that kid did, he was what, 18? Yeah, it was stupid. It was stupid, reprehensible. Stupid, boyish. You know, what? I can see a million other kids doing it. I just, um, his life has been totally, I mean, he. That's not his sentence. His life is ruined. His life in many respects is ruined. Um, and And the other thing is, is that. Um, you know, you you can't. I don't hold him totally responsible for the other for the other boy's decision to end his life. Um, well, the jury did. I uh, not really. I mean, I, that was not one of the counts against him, but. They found him guilty of absolutely everything, so clearly they were drawing some conclusion that, well, because the suicide occurred like two days after the taping, then it sure looks like a cause and effect. Well, uh, it is a it is a cause. Yeah. But it's you know it's different it's different than it's different than murder. The thing is, I don't know what's to be... Um, what, there's nothing to be gained. No, there's nothing to be gained for this kid sitting in jail for a, forever. I mean, he's already, as I've said, I think, uh, he certainly learned a lesson. <laughs> um, and this whole incident allowed a, for a teachable moment for a lot of kids all over the place, right? I mean, there's no question that there was absolutely no intent for how this incident played out that 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 he wasn't trying to drive the guy to he suicide. wasn't trying to drive this kid to his death he was freaked out that he was rooming with a gay guy who actually had asked him to leave so that he could be with another man now, a lot of 18 year old boys would you know their sexuality is still I don't know. I, it's just tragic every way, every which way you look. But I, I have to admit, I was, I was surprised. I thought he was going to get a, a heavier sentence than that, than 30 days. What do I know? Um, so, did you see the article in the New York Times about uh, George Lucas? Star oh. Wars. George Lucas. Well, George Lucas uh, bought up, a, he got a ton of land in Marin County, that, uh, you know, that county that is filled with rich, that's right, outside of San Francisco. Right. And he's got, um, he had wanted to put up a, a, a large digital studio there. Uh, which he thought would be a benefit to the area and uh, allow him to, you know, stay in the hills that he loves. Anyway, a bunch of, you know, people who live in the area got all freaked out and said, uh, we don't want that kind of thing here. We want our beautiful hills and our gazillion dollar homes, and we don't want that. And so he finally backed away 
But instead, he has announced that he is going to, I guess, underwrite the building of low-income housing. (laughs) (laughs) On on the property. (laughs) Here's one of the neighbors. Why, it's inciting class warfare! It's vindictive. Well, and some people are saying he didn't even mean it that way. He was thinking, you know, you can't afford to live in this area unless you're a millionaire. How about if we put up some housing that regular people can live in? It would be better for the whole community. Yeah, exact, exactly. So anyway, um, you know, the people who live up there in, in Marin County think of themselves as liberals, right? Right. But the thought of uh, of people that are not worth uh, over a million dollars moving in is um, shows their true colors. That's right. And here's here's one. Here, here here's here's a Carl Frick, a board member of the Lucas Valley Estates Homeowners Association, which represents houses nearest to the Lucas property, said. We got letters saying, you guys are going to get what you deserve. You're going to bring in drug dealers, all this crime and low life. That's how these people think. That if you don't have a lot of money, you're a low life. That's right. If you don't have a million dollars, you must, there's something. Then you're a drug dealer. When? But, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Because no. if you were a drug dealer, you'd, you'd have be a million dollars. Door. Yeah. But what I want to know is, how where and this is what the conservatives and republicans believe too where did this twist come that wealth means virtue <laughs> and lack of wealth means that you're riffraff what kind of insanity is that i mean it's so alien to and these are often you know good christian people too it is absolutely turns what jesus preached on its head Well, you're what? right. It's also just contrary to what's running across our our news headlines daily. Oh, my God. So, anyway, I just love this. Uh, George Lucas putting up low-cost housing, uh, because, uh, you know, in lieu of... They don't want the disgraceful side of people working near them, and they don't want the disgraceful side of... of low-life, middle-class people living next to them. Yeah. Uh, so, apparently, he's just... The people there are just flabbergasted. You know, be careful what you wish for. So they all they all tried... You know, they thought they had... They had won a great victory against George Lucas. <laughs> he said, okay, uh, you don't want my, uh, my place of business here. Fine. And it was going to be on a ranch, you know, some big, it wouldn't have been, whatever. It it was tasteful and all of this. So now he's going to put up uh, housing for non-millionaires. Well, he's right. There's a shortage of housing for for the people that everybody wants to staff their businesses. I mean... Yeah, you Your can't live. Your workforce has to right. be able to afford to live somewhere in the in the vicinity. Well, you know, when I was uh, visiting Robin, my friend Robin, on Nant, were we on Nantucket? No, we were on uh, Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much. Get all those places mixed up. Martha's Vineyard, and you see. You know, that's where, oh, you drive by, and, oh, yes, that's where the Kennedy li- Kennedy lives there, and this one lives here, and then all the houses in the little town are, you know, there was one for sale for 500 gazillion dollars, and it's so pricey there, yet it's the kind of place that has a million little shops and people working in them and lovely restaurants and people working in them, and, and I actually, I said to one of the people I encountered, well, where do the people like at the hotel we're at, where do the maids live in Martha's Vineyard? Where, where is there any place that the people who serve all these wealthy people live? And you know what? They really don't 
live there. No, they got to take the ferry back they're to the They're ferried mainland. in and out. Or there are some places where there's almost like dormitory things in the summer where some of them stay in these like dorms. There's no place for the likes of them to actually live but, where you know, they that's work. That's the way a lot of vacation places are, I have to say. I mean, are if they? you go up to Door County, you'll find... Uh, you know, the ice cream shop at in Ephraim, you know, is stacked with is is stocked with, with people that live upstairs all summer, you know, and it was a great job if you were a high school kid or a college kid. Mm-hmm. Well, the sense that this country is not a class oriented oh, well, society. It's, it's, it's just, just poppycock. It's I mean just, who um, said that? What do you mean who said Republicans. that? Republicans. Republicans they who do have say- come out against class warfare. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, um, I'll give you one more uh, factoid. I'll give you two more. 94% of college students borrow money to pay tuition, which is double the percentage that borrowed needed to borrow money just 20 years ago. You tell me what direction we're going in in this country. So, well, you know, here's what I don't get. Why are we paying university professors, you know, between three quarters of a million and a million dollars a year? And why do these colleges need to have billion dollar endowments? I don't know, Susan. And, and why are we giving them all this money, which they are hoarding right. and charging? I know. I mean, you can't. How much money do you have to make in order to make the investment of a half a million dollars in your kids undergraduate education make sense okay well that okay that's a good question and i follow it with this factoid so for going into debt up to their eyeballs till they're middle-aged or even in retirement uh young people in america who graduated from college uh since 2009 Less than half of them found a job within one year of graduating. So the majority of them are unemployed for at least a year after getting this valuable uh, education that supposedly is going to ensure that they will have a job. And when they do find work, their average starting salary is three thousand dollars less than it was just four years ago we're creating uh what are we saddling these guys these kids with debt putting them in the they, unemployment they certainly line aren't they get, be able to own a house because they already have the equivalent of a mortgage on a six hundred thousand dollar home yeah it's unbelievable It, 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 and how many times do you get to represent your own equity? Excuse me? Represent your own equity? Well, you're, they're it. They don't even have a oh. house to show about no, it. They're they... their own equity. Oh, right. Yeah. Something's broken. And I don't even hear people talking about it much. I mean, no solutions. Just Band-Aid fixes. It's ridiculous. Okay, Suze, that'd be it. Okay, bye. Thank you so very much. Nice yeah. talking at you. To you. Bye. And as for the rest of you, same. Nice talking at you. Uh, I saw Chris Potter walk by a few moments ago. I would imagine he'll be here in the studio with me tomorrow. Hope you will, too. Lynn Coven Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Coven Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.